Before we begin, a few words of wisdom here. Do not use this and listen to this while you are driving or operating heavy machinery. It's best if you can try to do it sitting up in a relaxed position or laying down, and it's okay if you actually fall asleep, but it's good to just kind of be mindful that you are not disrupted and distracted, uh, your do not disturb is on, and no one is going to bother you if possible. So with that being said, let's begin. All right, first what we're going to do is we're going to take a couple deep breaths. We're going to take an inhale in. And exhale out. Let's do that again. Inhale. And exhale. Okay. First, what I want you to do is I want you to start thinking about the things that bother you the most. What are the things that you're actually thinking about? What are the concerns that you have? I want you to look at them all and I want you to feel them. I want you to re-evaluate them, do everything that you need to do. And then I want you to take them and I want you to see yourself putting them into a backpack. We're going to put this into a backpack. So each one of those thoughts, those concerns, those overthoughts, we're going to put them in a backpack. We're not going to get rid of them. We're just going to individually set each and every one of those. Watch yourself opening up this really big backpack. It's not going to be super heavy, but you're going to carry this. Okay. You're going to put all of these things into your backpack. You're going to swing that backpack around your back, and we are going to start up the mountain. So at the base of this mountain, you can look up and you can see there's stones, there's sticks, there's a couple little bit of broken bottle glass to the right, and there's lots of trees. And as you look up that hill and on that big old mountain, you look and you think, whoo, this one's going to be hard. But you know what? I got my backpack and I'm ready to go. So you got all your stuff with you. And that's okay, because we're gonna do something good with it. So we wanna carry it with us because that's what we've been doing up until this point in our life. So you're gonna put that on your back and we're gonna start slowly up this mountain. And as you're going up this mountain, I want you to hear the crunch of the stones, that crunch that you hear when you step on the gravel, that crunch that you hear if you accidentally um, step on rocks in the beach, like that kind of crunching sound that you feel and that you hear. I want you to hear that as you're going up and feel it, feel that in those legs. Know that you're going up at a really high incline. I mean, this is a pretty steep mountain because this mountain is gonna be the mountain of life. So of course it's gonna be hard and it's gonna be steep. So as we're walking up, I want you to take a short pause and I want you to stop and to the right of you, I want you to see this beautiful tree. It's a beautiful weeping willow type tree. It resembles the tree of life. And I want you to look at it. I want you to appreciate it for what it is. And in that moment, you see this little squirrel scamper by. Little squirrel, he's scampering by and he's running around the tree. This intrigues you. So you're going to walk over near this tree that this squirrel seems to be luring you to. And it's funny, you see on the tree, there's this little uh, wooden sit thing that says, please slide me to the right. And you're like, oh, that's weird. So you slide that over to the right and there's instructions. It says, hi, I know that you're carrying a lot on this journey. I want you to leave me one present of things that are in your backpack. And you think to yourself, huh, okay, well, I'm going to do that. And if you need to pick it up on the way back, you can. But why bother? You're going to leave it here for him and the squirrels. So you take off your backpack. You open up your backpack. And I want you to think of one thing, nothing that's super heavy, but something that you overthink about or something that you're concerned about or something that you've been carrying with you. And I want you to see it into some kind of a... Uh, material. Okay, so maybe it's a box, maybe it's a wood, wooden box, maybe it's a square, maybe it's a bullet. It doesn't matter what it is, but I want you to formulate whatever it is that you're worried about into whatever this item is. And I want you to give it is some kind of like an offering to leave it to the tree. And the reason we do that is because the tree tells you, and it says under there, it says, don't worry about what you leave me. I will transmutate that into something positive. So you think, okay, this is great. So you're going to leave that right down there by the tree. You give that tree a little hug, a little snug. You see the little squirrel scamper off and goes back up the trail. This squirrel has now become your guide. This little squirrel is going to guide you on your journey all the way up this mountain. So as you make your way back over there, you happen to hear some water. It sounds like a creek that's like kind of just a little babbling brook creek. 
and you know that it's going to be up this mountain, right? You're going to see it at some point. You just haven't been to the clearing yet. So as Mr. Squirrel waits for you and he's black and he's got a cute little gray and black tail with a little bit of hints of white throughout him and he sits up on his hind legs as to wait for you and as you swing your backpack on your back and you get over to the path, you and the squirrel start to scamper up. Now he's going zigzag and he's doing so to keep you going slow because part of you wants it to get to the top right away. As in most part of your life, you want that instant gratification. You want to lose that weight. You want to reach that goal. But the squirrel is telling you, hey, hey, that's not part of your journey yet. This is the journey. And at that point, the squirrel looks to you and verbalizes this to you and says, you must be patient. You must be patient. You must be patient. Now, after you get over the initial shock of the squirrel actually speaking to you, you feel this calm that overcomes you. And the squirrel says, continue to follow me. And as you go up this hill, you see this babbling brook. And that's over to the left. Now, you don't necessarily see it. You kind of hear it. And the squirrel jumps off the path and runs over towards it. And as you go over there, you see a grave marker. And in this grave marker... This says, the old you. And at this grave marker is where the bunny rabbit is sitting with now the squirrel. So now we have a bunny rabbit and the squirrel. And the bunny rabbit, he's pink with a white nose, not white with a pink nose. This perplexes you because you're used to seeing things only from the direction in which you think is right or wrong. And the rabbit too has a voice. And the rabbit says to you, why do you look at me so? And you say to the rabbit, you're pink. I've never seen a pink rabbit. The rabbit says, you've never looked. And you think to yourself, well, I have never looked for a pink rabbit. And the message in that, that the rabbit is sending you is that you only see things from one perspective. But when you start to shift that perspective, you start to see things in a different light, different opportunities come. You're not held to just that one standard. There's not just one way to see a bunny rabbit. There's not just one way to meet your to reach your goals. There's not just one way to please yourself and to love yourself. And as you get over to this babbling brook, you and the bunny and the squirrel, as you all get to this babbling brook, there's a sign. And the sign says, I am here. Leave me one of your worries. So once again, you take off your backpack and not only are you going to leave one, the pink rabbit says to you, leave more. And you say, the sign says leave one. And the rabbit says more than one way to release what you need. So without question, you take two this time. You set two down. You feel a little weird about setting two down because the sign said leave one. But often those two things are linked, in turn, becoming one. So after you get over the initial, I'm not following instructions, and you set both of these down, see yourself setting them down, putting them on the river rock. There's the wet there, and you can see the river running. And at that point, you see another little reminder. Do not worry about the worries in which you leave. I will transmutate that into positivity. And as you release it, you swing your backpack on your back again. And you start back over to the path with the rabbit and the squirrel. The squirrel stops mid-walk, looks to you, and says, that is enough for today. And as you've started to get into your groove and you've started to see yourself and you've started to feel things and you've kind of started to expand a little bit, you might feel a little like, why well, I could keep going. And the squirrel says, it's not a race, it's a marathon. This is enough for today. And as you and the rabbit and the squirrel go back to the path, now instead of going up the hill, we're going down the hill. Backpacks just a little bit lighter. The pink rabbit asks you, do you want to stop at the tree to pick up your worry? You say, no, thank you. And as all three of you start to go down this hill, 
you can feel yourself being a little teeny tiny bit lighter, a little bit confused, wondering how you just talked to some animals, how there was a pink rabbit, how you did something that was a little bit out of your comfort zone by leaving two when somebody said one, but then when put into perspective, you could see how it was still one, just two different branches of the same tree. It gave you a little bit more perspective. It's giving you a space to start. And as you get to the base of this mountain, the squirrel and the bunny, who remain there on the hill, says to you, visit here often. And you feel comfortable with this. But they don't leave you with just that. They say the next time you come, leave more things at the tree. Leave one more thing at the tree. Leave two more things at the babbling brook. They remind you that this is not just a one time event. They remind you that you can come here as often as you need. They remind you that it's not a race. They remind you that this is something that you have to visit frequently to feel more comfortable with leaving your worries, stepping outside of your comfort zone, taking a different perspective and seeing things not just from one side. And with that, they say to you, let's breathe together. You put your right hand over your heart. You put your left hand on your stomach. You all three breathe and exhale. And they say, until we meet again.